Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. I get a lot of questions, especially in microservices, about orchestration versus choreography. And so I wanted to spend this short lesson, Lesson 23, on the differences between orchestration and choreography. Let's just study orchestration first. When we think about orchestration, there's a root word that should come to your mind. And if we think about orchestration and orchestra, orchestra comes to mind. And when we take a look at this orchestra right here, in the very middle, we have a conductor. And that conductor is central to this orchestra. It makes everything happen, all the music beautiful. And so when we think about orchestration, think about an orchestra with a central conductor, a single person kind of guiding and directing all these musicians. But then let's think about choreography for a minute. Because when we think about what's choreographed, it's certainly not orchestras, but rather dance, whether it be classical dance or modern dance. The dancers are communicating and moving with each other. There's no central conductor guiding or directing any of the dancers. And so I really like this kind of analogy um, with choreography being dance and orchestration really being an orchestra with a conductor, because what I'd like to do is really apply that now two architectural concepts. And so let's take a look at choreography first. And so we have a customer wish list service right here with its own data, and let's say it's a microservice, and we have a customer demographics, which is a separately deployed unit of software also with its own data. Now the customer demographics has the name, the address, uh, profile information about the customer, and the customer wish list microservice. Here is a separately deployed unit of software that manages the wish list for the customer. And what we have is a request, get the wish list for customer number one, two, three. And so in this particular case, we're only going after the wish list service. However, the wish list and demographics are going to act as dancers, being able to communicate and collaborate with themselves. Notice there's no kind of central conductor here because that request comes singly into the customer wish list. Now, the customer wish list has most of the information, but unfortunately needs the name of the customer. Now, the wish list data does not contain the customer, only the ID so or the customer name. So what it does, watch this, through choreography, like the dancers, these two services communicate between themselves. So the wish list asks the customer demographics to get the name and the wish list returns the name mark. The information is compiled and aggregated and then sent back up to that HTTP client. And so this is an example of choreography, where as you can see, there's no central conductor here, that the services like dancers are kind of communicating between themselves. Let's take a look now at orchestration, because here's a different kind of request. Get all data for customer number one, two, three. Now that in our simple example is going to involve the wish list and all the demographic information and profile information about that customer. So in this case, the wish list and demographics act individually in that that wish list does serve up wish list information like this violinist here, but then there's another musician here that handles all the profile things. Now, each of these musicians can certainly play the instruments beautifully independently, but what we need to coordinate the wish list and demographics information is some sort of other service. In other words, we need some piece of software, an example of this microservice right here, which is separately deployed, which now acts as the conductor. And so when that request comes in to get all this data, that request comes into the conductor microservice. In other words, that microservice orchestrator, which is separately deployed. And now it has the responsibility of coordinating these two services like the musicians to gather all the wish list information, all the demographics information, and then aggregate that together and send it back to the HTTP client. Now, this is very typical in microservices where we would have a separate microservice acting as that conductor. You see, in an orchestra, we need that single person kind of guiding and directing 
and in our case, gathering all that information together. It's not the responsible of, responsibility of the violinist to, to conduct this tuba player here and the vice versa, the tuba player to conduct or to direct the violinist. Now, in cases outside of microservices, uh, sometimes the API layer itself can act as that conductor. And this is in case of such things as, for example, Mule, uh, Spring Integration, Camel, uh, Azure Shuttle. Um, these are kind of uh, ESBs, if you will, enterprise service buses, that once the request comes into that API layer, then that API layer can optionally act as that conductor to coordinate these two services together. And so that's kind of just a simple example um, just to really clarify orchestration versus choreography. Generally, when we need to gather all this information and aggregate it together into a single model, that's where orchestration comes in, where if we only need a piece of information here or there, that's usually when services communicate between each other, like dancers, with choreography. So hopefully this kind of simple example helps clarify the differences between orchestration and choreography and when to use each. And so, so this has been Lesson 23, Orchestration versus Choreography. Stay tuned each Monday for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you very much.